Okay, so so obviously, you know, with Bernie withdrawing from the race. Um, there's a, a, a lot of a lot of students seem kind of displeased with the with the Democratic primary process. So, do you feel that the primary process has discouraged young voters and specifically college age students? And and how so? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you see things like coin flips being used in caucuses to determine delegate votes, uh, which is seems ridiculous to people who live in uh, direct primary states. Um, you have things like the huge fiasco with the mobile app. Um, I don't know if you heard about that in the Iowa caucus, there was a huge oh, yeah. disaster with a, like a, a company called shadow, uh, created this app to help run the, uh, caucus there. And it was a huge disaster. And we still don't know the actual Iowa accurate delegate count. Yeah. Um, because even after they admitted that their delegate count was wrong, they said, no, we're not fixing it. <laughs> so I think the whole, like, contrast between doing things old fashioned and people wanting to use these new technologies and new ideas that are supposed to streamline things <laughs> mm -hmm. in the Democratic Party, there's kind of a, a tension between those two sort of ideas. And I think yeah. young people are disappointed in the Democratic Party's decision to side with old traditional ways of doing things. Uh, for people that have been paying attention to like the whole politics behind the scenes, right? Um, it was reported just like, I think yesterday or two days ago, and it, was, it came out back in March for Super Tuesday that like a lot of things, a lot like the, the centrist corporatist wing of the party, uh, play their card right, right before Super Tuesday, right? And I think that's a lot of, like, very discouraging with, with like, Buttigieg, Klobuchar dropping out at the last minute, like, you having, what, 125 endorsements within three days between South Carolina and Super Tuesday, um, all for Biden, and then 120 or $100 million worth of free pro-Biden media within those three days. Like, that, those types of things are, like, very discouraging to people because you're kind of, like, going up an uphill battle because, obviously, the Bernie campaign has been – doing all this stuff, all this grassroots momentum and everything like that, making calls, canvassing, doing all this stuff in all these different states where Biden didn't even have to campaign in half the states to win them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, it, I think it just shows the power of media agenda and stuff like that, that, that um, I don't know, it's discouraging when it's not the, like, the consensus within those branches of, and, and within that power structure, right? Um, but I think for college students specifically, and I know there were stories of California, Texas, especially in Texas because of the um, gutting of the Voting Rights Act in 2013 by the Supreme Court decision. Um, I don't know the, the name of the Supreme Court decision, but basically there was like thousands of polling places closed down in Texas and you had college students having to wait up to like six, eight hours to just to vote, right? And that's obviously disproportionately affecting college students as well as minority communities. And that's also very discouraging because obviously you're not going to have a college student wait in line for six hours if they also have a part-time job or they have school or whatever, right? Um, and those are the types of things that, that it's like, it's systematic, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's made so that way it's made harder for those types of groups to vote and to discourage them to actually have a voice in democracy within the United States type of thing. So the other big thing is, is Biden is same old, same old. Bernie's more uncompromising, new ideas, fundamental change, stuff like that, right? I think for a lot of young people, and this includes millennials and, and even some Gen Xers, right? You had millennials grow up from 9-11, 2008 recession, right after, right after college, they have no job opportunities. They can't afford rent. They can't afford a new apartment like their parents used to when they were 18, 19 years old, right? I'm assuming most of us are still living with our parents, right? Um, those are the types of things that, that, that incremental policy has not addressed in the past 40 years, right? You still see the minimum wage be the same as 2007. You see uh, wages stay stagnant for the past 40 years when you take into account inflation while productivity has doubled, right? So those are the types of things that, okay, yeah, if we wanted incremental change, those are the, you would see some, you know, some benefit and you'd see some, some movement, but there hasn't been for many workers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of young people are seeing that. And the other thing too is, is like, especially with climate change, 
where Bernie Bernie's proposal on climate change was rated A plus or A minus or whatever by the Sunrise Movement, where Biden's was rated an F. Bernie took more much more seriously the the 10, 12 year period that we have to prevent catastrophic damage and irreversible damage to our environment, right? And and that doesn't that's the combating climate change is not going to take incremental policy because we should have been doing incremental policy 40 years ago to combat climate change. Obviously, we've taken some small steps, but not to the drastic steps that we need to that are going to be needed within the next 10 to 12 years. And I think Bernie Sanders was much more fundamental and and proposed uh, was a lot more ambitious that a lot a lot of mo more young people were like, okay, yeah, even if we don't get to where Bernie Sanders is proposing or whatever, at least the ambition alone will, will push everything further to the left and will push and make things much more of a reality than going to the to the negotiation table with what you want and then getting less than that, you know? Uh, Biden is very much representative of the Democratic, uh, Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be very proud of that fact, when in reality, the Democratic Party isn't seen as a great organization by most young people and a lot of college students feel betrayed by the democratic party's decision decision to appease the right with a very centrist candidate and especially one who feels it's not necessary to even consider the youth vote like he's on record as saying i have no empathy for millennials it's things like that which make people feel like, well, if he doesn't feel like he needs to work for my vote, then why does he deserve my vote? You know, it's a very disappointing, you, people want to be seen. And Joe always says, I see you, but it's disappointing for him to still choose centrist and even right leaning ideas over the ideas that are existent within his own party and, and i've seen you know on online on twitter and everything the the students for bernie chapters on college campuses and the the ydsa the young democratic socialists of america all of the all of, most of the chapters anyways seem to have have all kind of banded together and said you know we're not endorsing joe biden and 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 so you know, you see a lot of people kind of unite, a lot of people on the left kind of uniting over, you know, not endorsing uh, Vice President Biden. So was that, did, did that all kind of come naturally with different chapters, I guess, in, in y'all's case? Did you guys partner up with any chapters on campus to release any statements, um, you know, w uh, expressing your displeasure with Biden, or did it just kind of come naturally? Yeah, so I, I think, if I remember correctly, the original First, the original group that said that they were not going to endorse Biden was the Youth Climate Strike group. And I think after that, I think they got a bunch of slack for it. And I think Harvard, Yale, and like a bunch of other schools started like chipping in. It was kind of like a, like a, just everything just started like going together kind of thing. Um, it wasn't like orchestrated by like the Bernie campaign or anything like that. Um, it was, um, and especially for us, um, I know we we didn't make any statement. We were kind of on the like the late end of making a statement or whatever. But until like a couple members started reaching out and saying like, "Hey, what are we going to do?" That's when we decided to have the organization vote, and obviously the vote went to the way that it did. Um, so so yeah, it was it was kind of just like I don't know. It w wasn't really like a like a planned thing or anything like that. Even though obviously today or yesterday Bernie endorsed Biden. So um, so yeah, it, it was it was just more of like just a thing that just happened over the weekend kind of thing i don't know yeah mikey yeah i mean it 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 was really just a not spur of the moment would be the wrong word to say but unexpected a little bit because bernie sanders has always been very vocal about endorsing the party candidate but it's not surprising in the fact that like Biden is the candidate so of course people who disagree with Biden on almost every issue are not going to endorse him mm -hmm. but also not expect not unexpected because not endorsing Biden doesn't mean we're not voting for him you know not endorsing Biden doesn't mean we don't agree that Trump is the most dangerous president to ever 
be president of the United States. You know, it, all it means in our decision to not endorse is that Biden does not deserve recognition from a progressive socialist organization for anything because he's not an ally in that struggle. Mm -hmm. Do you, is that so? My my last question. You we've uh, you both have kind of touched on a little bit uh, about you know concerns over Biden and why he's not appealing to Bernie supporters. What do you think is the main distinction, I guess, between you, you know where where students or or voters draw the line where between not supporting Joe Biden versus Bernie Sanders? Where do you think kind of the the line is drawn primarily? I mean, it's it's very difficult with 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 because every person is different, right? Um, I know, I know there's always like the saying of like voting for the lesser two evils. And I mean, there's always that statement, but then people have draw a line in the sand, right? Where they're like, oh, if it's, I don't know, worst person and second worst person in the world, I'm not voting type of thing. And it's, it's different for every single person, right? So I think between Bernie and Biden is the, the ideological difference is clear, but also the record differences are clear as well. Um, and what they stand for. And, and I, I think, you know, Bernie's been very, very consistent. He's 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 been a leader in what he stands for and, and what he, what he's advocating for. Where Biden has been more on the back end, where he, every every time that that something popular happens, oh, then he supports the type of thing. And I think a lot of young people look at you know consistency and and um, being a leader in in such a difficult time to to kind of show that okay this is the person that I know is actually going to be fighting for me when the, when the cards are against them or whether like back in the corner or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think, I, but like I said, I think it's, I think it's different for a lot of people. I know, I know one thing I see a lot of times is obviously the rape allegation against Biden is a huge division, um, for a lot of voters. Um, I mean, you know, that's, that is what it is. And I, I think, I think those are the types of things that the democratic party is going to have to come and, and reckon with and discuss because obviously I don't think I mean it was just discussed by New York Times like yesterday or two days ago but then they like changed the story at the behest of the Biden campaign even though the story's been out for three four weeks now um but th those types of things are, are the types of things those are the discussions that we're gonna have to have and, and say like okay obviously these are these are qualities of, of Joe Biden but d is that representative of the, of the party I don't really think so but you know, you have the two choices. So I don't know. I think, I think the division between Biden and Bernie is very clear. Um, and the division between Donald Trump and Biden and Bernie is, is even more clear. So voters are going to have to, like, I think voting, if you're a Bernie supporter, I think if, if you're in like a swing state and stuff like that, it's obviously who you're going to choose. But for people that are, are not in a swing state like Maryland, I mean, where the vote is more symbolic than anything, because we already know what's going to be the outcome. And especially with the electoral college being the way that it is, people are are much more saying like, okay, you need to earn my vote type of thing. So, and and Mikey, what about you? Where do you think you know for you the the you part ways with with Joe Biden? Yeah, um, I think a a big part of it is voting record because people use the term as like uh, cancel culture as like this phenomenon in the modern internet age of people going back and deciding that what people did in the past is unacceptable and trying to retroactively hold them accountable for what they've done. And I, in the same way, Bernie's base is very online, very young. We know how to use the internet to figure out every one of Joe Biden's bad votes, bad policy decisions, his horrible questioning of Anita Hill, like these, all of these situations are very visible to us. And especially if you spend a lot of time on leftist Twitter. So it's not so much that we don't agree with what, Bo, Joe, what Joe Biden says and what he like wants to accomplish. We just disagree that he's the man to do the job because his entire history has been him at the tail end of these political movements, just reacting and addressing needs way too late. 